Hi subscribers, it's Sloan Rhodes here with your Spiritual Self Mastery Class Ego and Heart. Today I'm going to be drawing um, from the Sacred Rebels deck by Alana Fairchild. Uh, a friend of mine gave me this and it, the artwork is by Autumn Sky Morrison. And remember that even if you are a male or you don't identify as female, uh, these are all goddess cards, but we all hold those divine feminine energies within and we all hold the divine masculine. So you can always tap into these energies even if initially you might think, ugh, goddess. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna stick with the format that I used last week and I really appreciate all the comments uh, saying that you did like it um, or just all the comments in general. And also thank you to those of you who reached out to me via email. I appreciate it and uh, I'm just very touched by all of your um, loving comments, whether it be here on the YouTube channel or via email. So <laughs> having said that, I also wanna let you know that I realize that I have not completed the love readings. I ended on Libra, so I still have Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces coming up. So look for those. I am sorry for the delay with that. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So one card in position of what the ego may try to distract us with. And then that same card, I'm gonna look at from the heart-centered perspective so that you can recognize where your ego is coming in. And then you can also recognize where your heart is opening more and you're able to look at the situation in a more loving, expansive way. And then I'll get one more card in terms of what we can expect or look forward to regardless. Okay, here we go. Restore and replenish. Oh wow, number 38. What a beautiful card. And you know, I mean, it's what I've been doing, it's what many of you have been doing either consciously or unconsciously. Sometimes when the ego looks at a card or an energy such as restore and replenish or a message around restore and replenish, the ego, and you know this already for those of you who have uh, been attuning more and more to how the ego comes in around this idea of rest, relaxation, restoration, um, the ego can look at that in, in a very negative way. Like, what are you doing? You should be up and about. You should be doing more. Uh, this, when is this going to end? When is this fatigue going to end? Get up, get moving, uh, be productive. And that is a very harsh, older kind of consciousness around the need for replenishment, the need to replenish your energy, the need to um, allow uh, the restorative process to occur within your physical body, your emotional body, your spiritual understandings. And so the ego will look at it and say, no, no, <laughs> you're lazy. You should be doing more. Everything's gonna fall apart if you don't stay on it. Keep moving forward, keep driving, keep striving. You know, the ego's always like grasping more and more and more. But in the heart-centered energy, say, look, just have this experience. Rest, you're safe right now. You're, it's okay to restore your energy, to be kind to yourself, to get in a snuggly blanket, or to have a nice cup of tea, or to take time out throughout the day. Because for some of you, you may be undergoing an experience um, that precedes this week and goes and has been maybe going, going on for a while or may go in, into the future more than just this particular week of wanting to pull in more, of wanting to uh, allow yourself some space to integrate a lot of what you may be um, understanding spiritually or just a lot going on in your life. You know, it can show up in a lot of different ways. and. Um, so, you know, if that's the case, then, you know, be as kind and loving to yourself as you can be during this, what may be a more lengthy process. But for those of you who that just feels too stressful to even imagine taking that kind of time for yourself, or even there may be a forced illness or a forced accident that occurs that makes you take time out from what has been the norm for you. Um, but for those of you who are still trying to grind away, you know, they, you don't feel like you're really ready to um, spend that kind of time where you're not it's not in your conscious awareness right now that you're able to. What I would recommend is that throughout the day, just take a breath. You know, as I say this all the time, put your fingertips to your heart chakra. Remind yourself that you love you, that you're safe and secure, that you are caring for yourself. You know, maybe, maybe make one more choice that's slightly different than you did last week that is, feels healthier, that feels more restorative. Maybe just drink, you know, one more cup of water a day than you normally do. You know, or even a sip, one more sip um, throughout the day, <laughs> throughout the hour of water. Or if you're not someone who usually drinks water, 
begin to incorporate it along with your coffee, next to your coffee, or your, you know, your beer, or whatever it is that you, you tend to kind of do normally, you're being asked to have a great deal of self-care and bring consciousness around what it is you are doing to, um, to allow some healing, you know? So that's one of the practical ways um, that if you're not able to really, truly rest, you know, get away on a vacation or this kind of thing, then to take time throughout the day to breathe, to get up and walk around, to go out if you're not able to get outside, to, to maybe go to look at a window if you have a window. And if you're not able, if you're in an environment where there are no windows, um, I've been in those <laughs> corporate environments uh, and it's, it never feels good in my opinion, but whenever you can walk around, stretch your legs or have a photo that you, you, know, you can open up and look at, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, just to restore, to remind yourself that you are more than your current circumstances and that you are reminding the mind, reminding the ego that you are allowed to take time for yourself even if it's just a brief moment. It just begins to shift the pattern and make you more consciously aware that you um, have options available to you that include rest, restoration, replenishment, this kind of thing. Now the heart says, uh, with the restore and replenish card, um, look at how you are integrating. Look at the beautiful ways in which you are becoming more aware of your needs um, and your need for, for rest or your need to um, integrate or your need to replenish aspects of self that have felt depleted. And the heart says that's a beautiful part of the human experience. It's a beautiful part of Mother Gaia, of nature. You know, that the flower is not blooming continuously, you know, on 10 all the time. It has to die down and then replenish itself, restore its energy, and then unfurl once again. So it's, it's a part of the cyclical cycle of nature. But many times um, we forget that as, as we go through our, our daily lives or our weekly lives or monthly lives or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So the heart says that's part of nature. That's part of what it is to be uh, alive on the planet. You're not always at 10. That's, that's um, not sustainable. And usually what occurs when we try to keep grinding away, try to keep forcing things into fruition, forcing ourselves to, to power through. There's a lot of like accolades in our society to power through, just power through it, just get through it. Well, you can, of course, and, and you know we've all spent many times in our lives doing that, but with, with this consciousness kind of changing around this, uh, you can begin to recognize that that's more egoic, it's more based on fear, and it's not about enjoying the present moment. If you are trying to power through something to get it done, just get it done. Anytime you are doing something just in order to force yourself to finish, of course we all do it, but just bring some conscious, conscious awareness around it that what usually occurs is that the end result is fatigue. It's a sense of relief, so you are spiking again. You know, you're going through this, I didn't power through, power through, and you spike, I did it, I did it, and then there's the drop again. And so what we can do when we are aware of the ego and the heart is that we can begin to have a smoother type of experience where we're not powering through to get to the pinnacle and then dropping, you know, and it's, it's very uneven. And then you have um, less of your common preferences. You're, you're, you have less of your preferences um, available to you um, on, on a, um, a uh, let me put it this way, you have less availability to experience your preferences and you have more um, of this, you know, up and down. Uh, preference, non-preference, preference, non-preference, non and it's, it's rockier, you know, and you can even experience that when you go on vacation. I'm going to power through this and I'm finally going to get that vacation because I need it. You know, and then it's, you manifest it out of need, and then it always seems short-lived, and then you drop back down to, you know, I gotta grind away again, and then in six months or whatever, I'll get to go again, you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. And you know, I've lived, you know, like this in my own life, and in fact, have lived many incarnations in this pattern, and we all have. But what's happening now is we have an availability here and an opportunity to tap into the the new consciousness around us and and open our hearts more to allow things to be more smooth, and you can do that right back to where I was by recognizing it more throughout the day. Just a simple movement towards self-care, you know, just touching your arm, breathing. And if it feels awkward to put your fingertips to your heart chakra, you can just, again, touch yourself or fingertip to fingertip or snap your fingers, anything to kind of remind you that you have, um, you're allowed to, to be peaceful, even amidst circumstances or the daily grind that don't feel peaceful. Um, so restore and replenish.
You know, we have number 11 here, 38, right? This idea of the opening. When we have um, the 111, the 11s, there's uh, repeat numbers like that. There's an opening there, an opening in order to manifest, of course, which we as humans are always looking to do, but also an opening to expand more into greater awareness and a new level of consciousness. So something to think about uh, there. I hope that makes sense for you. So the ego says, no, 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 you need to power through, you're lazy, uh, you, know, you know, you're going to lose everything unless you keep going, keep going, keep powering through. Of course you can. I'm not saying that you, you can't do that and still manifest good things. I'm saying that with this card, it's exhausting for you and it may be uh, counterproductive in the long run because you may end up getting sick or you may not get what you really are wanting, which is um, a life that's filled with more love and more peace and serenity. Now, I'm going to get one more card. <laughs> Uh, here to look at what we can expect or look forward to regardless. And it doesn't have to be a crazy making experience toggling back and forth or becoming aware of the ego and the heart. It's just something to kind of be like, oh, hmm, I think I might be in my ego right now because I'm really judging myself because I'm not able to get up out of this chair and do what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, that's right there, that's the ego. But just having that thought, huh, I wonder if that is my ego. Uh, even having that thought begins to shift the pattern. And you don't even have to do anything other than that, you, just in the moment. Um, but if you want to take it further, you can say, all right, so if my ego is judging myself right now, how can my heart look at this? And the heart can look at it and say, my goodness, look at how hard you've been working. What a beautiful soul you are. Look at the act of kindness you are doing towards yourself right now by resting, allowing your body to recuperate, allowing your mind to to um, calm down, to connect more with spirit, this kind of thing. So, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy making, but it can, um, it can be done in a, in a very kind of more playful, gentle way. All right, so let me get one card from the Sacred Rebels deck in terms of what we can expect or look forward to regardless throughout the week. So we have Restore and Replenish. And just to remind you all that I do have all of my readings available on the audio podcast, so you can listen to them as well as watch them here on the YouTube channel. There are links below. And I don't use this, this particular deck in my home study courses for how to read Oracle and Tarot cards, but I use many other decks. And so if you're interested in learning how to read Oracle and Tarot cards, there are links below to the Sloan Academy, and you can um, purchase your... Uh, courses there and I probably will be doing a sale um, for after Thanksgiving so you can look for that. What can we expect to look forward to throughout the week? Listening for truth. Well, this must be why part of the reason why we have to restore and replenish, right? So this idea of taking time out. It's very difficult to hear the truth, right? To hear the voice of spirit, to hear your intuition, to hear your guides and angels when you are, for example, <laughs> at a bus station, at a train station, and people are coming and going. There's a screech of the brakes, there's the engine noise, uh, a lot of hurrying, right? It's very difficult to, to hear the whispers of your soul when you are involved in that kind of hurry, you know? Um, that kind of uh, high octane kind of get going, get, get busy kind of thing. Um, and so the listening for the truth can occur much more easily, you can hear it, much more easily when you are in a restful, peaceful place. So even just taking time out to go to the restroom, to take a walk, to stretch your legs, to say, excuse me, I'll be back in a moment, to breathe, that is a way of listening to, to the truth of what you want, as opposed to just reacting constantly to what's around you. You're able to respond more when you take a moment. How is this for me? What do I want to do for me next? Because if it's not for you, if it's not, let me put it this way, if what you are doing is not, um, does not feel good to you, you're not feeling connected to, you're not really helping anyone. So when you listen to the truth of what you're wanting in that moment, I think I want to take a moment to walk around, to go outside for a second, to go to the bathroom, to take a sip of tea, 
to get some more coffee, whatever it may be, to connect with a friend, to smile at this individual, to listen to someone else's conversation, to get a different perspective on what's occurring in and around me. When you do that, you are taking time for yourself and you're more able to connect to what you want. You're listening for the truth of your message to you, your higher self, let's say, if you want to look at it like that. Um, your, your higher self's message to you, the whisper of soul, of your soul to you, the whisper of your guides and angels and spirit, listening for the truth. But you, you know, you have to take time out. Again, it's very difficult to be at the train station, the bus station, and hear <laughs> when it's just like, you know, craziness all around you and people are coming and going and you're, you know, your adrenaline is high. You know, it's very, very difficult. This is why people usually uh, take time out when they are undergoing um, uh, a process of healing or integration or um, uh, a spiritual awakening, this kind of thing, because you can hear the whisper of spirit of your soul much more easily when you are in a peaceful, quiet place and the adrenaline and the ego doesn't have such a grip on you. So uh, allow yourself those moments and trust your intuition this week. And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Just means that you would probably benefit from being a little bit more quiet so that you can identify your intuition more easily um, and not just the voice of the ego. So something to think about for the week. I hope that you find that helpful. Um, very, very interesting uh, messages for the week. And I, I love this deck again. It's um, a beautiful deck. So, all right, I hope you found that helpful and I wish you much love. And of course, for those of you who are celebrating Thanksgiving here in North America or in the United States, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and safe travels if you're traveling.